what's missing curfew. It's when you kind of play guilty, but you show up. How nice is a green light on the road, though? No practice tomorrow, no playing, just go. Scotty Upshaw in the clear, and he scores! In front, scores! A few laughs, a little bit of fun, and obviously a lot of hockey talk. You're listening to Missing Curfew. Bye, lads. Fella. My man. Merry Christmas to the boys here at Missing Curfew. Shout out to our boy PJ and you. The big guy. Look at this. All I got to say is Wendell. Look at him. You want to talk about the game's changed, and thank God I didn't play against Wendell because that would have been me on the bottom. But what a pick. Do we know who's on the bottom? Uh, it's the guy from, uh, what's that last name say? Brooke? I might say Brooke. B-R-O-O-K-E, Brooke. It says broken after that. Yeah, I look at Wendell. Look at him just laying the boots to him. Signed. PJ got it for us at a Hall of Fame thing when he was there. But hey, Merry Christmas, bud. Where are we going to put that? Let's put I don't it know. in the studio. Hey, Max, we're live I'm here. But put it, by the way, in studio. We're just doing a little film here. Right up there. I think you put it right where that, right where the DraftKings sweater is. Nah, for the moment, you can maybe just keep it right there. Yeah, nice work. But at three go. I, my favorite player growing up, you know that, right? He was uh, I, he was my favorite player. I, I got to be honest, my old man was a, a Leafs fan. Um, I used to watch Leafs games on this little like four inch by four inch fucking TV we used to have in our kitchen, like the Hockey Night in Canada games. And when Wendell was just the old jersey they wore the best, just him. I mean, he threw so fast. He didn't ask any questions. Oh. He just said, he didn't even ask. He as, said, let's go. As Oscar Bertuzzo would say. Listen, if there's any. Throw first, ask questions later. Yeah, exactly. If there's any kid out there, you know, getting into the second half of the season, you're looking for a little pump me upper, go to YouTube and Google Wendell Clark, all heart. Metallica, I mean, oh, I used to watch it before playoff games or a big Saturday night rivalry game against the Hawks or Oilers were coming in. Got me fired up. Really? Oh, Good for you. All heart, Wendell Clark. Um, what's going on with, uh, you got a lot of, we got a lot of movement. Really you want to talk got, about my yeah, wearable? You got Apple Watch, uh, an Aura Ring. Well, the Aura Ring, you know this. The, the Aura Ring, I've had this for like five years and shout out to Aura. They were, they were proud sponsors of ours to start the season off. I got this new, you, you know, you've been wearing an Apple Watch forever. Yeah. And I'm a little jealous that you're able to, you know, you, you, when you swim, uh, pickleball, you golf, walk, you know, you know your steps. So I don't really get that, you know? No, I don't quite get that. So I got this at the Mark Wahlberg golf tournament the other week. That was a nice gift. gift. Wow, that's a big yeah. The painting was a gift, Todd. Todd, the painting was a gift. I'm thinking uh, with me. So I set it up last night. You know, I did all the buttons. I put some picks on there. You know, um, but I'm really testing out. It's been vibing on my my hand. But this one, more importantly, what's it say? Fish of the water, or what? yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just go to bed. Um, no, so this thing, it's it's a new company called Apollo, and it's all about vibrations. So they own all these patents on different vibrations that set your body, put them in the right spot. Uh, so shout out to my boy, Dave Goto, one of the biggest legends of all time. Um, this thing for like four ninety nine a month, you, you fire this thing and it just, it starts to like, when you wake up, it wakes you up to like this calming, you know, energized before your coffee. And then like when I sat down here for our interview with our guests that we had, I, uh, I hit energy and it was just going like, it was nice. So it really sets like your day and the vibrations, um, and I guess we're, you know, we're made of water and, and electricity and vibria. Yeah. yeah. Don't quote me on that, but I think we are. Uh, this thing is just, it's cool. So Apollo. I could have, I could have used that on some nights when I needed some energy in the master league. I could have just put that thing on my wrist and it could just like, wake up, Obi, wake yeah. up, Obi. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's no way that's your, your, your only aura ring you've ever had. There's no way. Oh no. Oh. I've had, geez, man. <laughs> this is the new one that when they first came out, they were clanky. Now this one you can really work out with. You can actually... You're not going to golf the whole time. Sometimes with it? it fits on your fucking hand. I got a big paw. I know. I couldn't get it on my sausage. Yeah, drink. this is a 12. This is a 12, and they only go to like 13 or 13 and a half. So I got a you know, mighty big paw there. So you got all kinds of things working for you. There. Yeah. You got all kinds. How many That's steps, why my hair is staying up. How many steps you got uh, in the Apple Watch? Tell that. Okay, hit your, hit your home button. Yeah, this one? Yeah. Boom. Now go to that activity. Hit okay. Now scroll down. Okay. Oh. How many steps you got there? It says right here, right here? twenty one hundred already. Twenty six hundred. Twenty six hundred. Is that good? You try to get ten thousand a day. You should get ten thousand a day just for the lack of that. You don't sit the fuck down. I know. I took the dog for a walk yeah. today. Me and Beckham took did the dog. You have for... the, did you have that on when you went for the walk? No. Yeah. See, you got to get it on right away. Yeah. How do you do that? By the way, you'll get you'll get over ten thousand in your sleep. I would say, 
for me, a day that I go for a walk and play golf, I get like 16,000 steps. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to say if you if you put that up to the time you wake up, if you can remember the time you shut her down, how much you move, I'm going to say you'll get 15,000 steps a day at yeah. least. I'll let you know by tomorrow. Yeah. Keep that on. I'll be moving around dinner tonight with you, by the way. Yeah. I can't wait. Speaking of who, speaking of a guy we should have tracked, you got his steps. Max. Maxie. How you doing, Max? Press pound if you're alive. We were worried about you on Sunday. That was hilarious. Up here. How you doing, bud? The hell is I'm hiding behind the sign today. I, I, I'm going to just tuck back low down, hang low down here. Was it uh, was it like a fella tour or like, like did you really get after or how would it go? It was like a fella tour. Yeah, I got after it. Um, shout out to my boys getting married, Tommy Porter. Been, been boys since we were four years old. Don't do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be crew. Still time. About 20 to 25 guys rolled through throughout the weekend and- uh, there was some like there was somebody up at all twenty four hours of the day, multiple people at all twenty four hours of the day. So with that big of a wow. crew, it was people just taking breaks to take naps, and there was never a time when like everybody just shut her down. So, what's the are you allowed to tell like the cra- one of the craziest things that happened or, or no names, but like you know because you got some single guys in there, but anyone just you know really fall off the fucking rails. Uh, <laughs> Let's anyone go say, missing or anyone go missing? Let's yeah. just say my reputation precedes me. Yeah, no, well yeah. done, Max. Well done. No, I figured Max would lead the charge. For I'm sure. Yeah, I know, yeah. For sure. Fall asleep right on your doorstep. Because, like, listen, we, we, we've done a lot of fellow tours now. We're continuing to do them. Like, our first fellow tour ever, you know, we brought Broadway in. God rest his soul, Broadway. We miss you. But Max came. It was our first time on the on the road. Yeah. Getting to know each other. Yeah. And Max overshot the runway. I said, fuck, it could happen to anyone, kid. Yeah. You know, then we went on another fellow tour. It kind of happened again. <laughs> then we went on another fellow. I go, okay, so this is just how you do it, fellow. Okay, as long as I know. As long as I know this is, yeah, this is your pace of play. Just so on, like, the second night, like, I'll, I'll start to look after you. Yeah, yeah, just so I know I got to keep my eye on you. Just, uh, <clears throat> I, you held up nice and asked me. You had a good glow going uh, the, at the auction, though. You had a nice glow going, didn't you? Yeah, you know, that, that high altitude, the first night there, I got a little excited. But uh, but we, we I kept it going. I was able to dig it up on Saturday and, and go chase up you around in a jet jet. Yeah, in a or, jet. yeah, you must jet have one. been doing all right because uh, stone sober, I couldn't chase up around in a jet or chase up around. Period. But Max, yeah, glad you had a good time, buddy. Way to represent the company. Uh, shout out to our boy A Hall Hall Pass Media. Um, we came here on Thursday night last week before he took off for New York, which we'll touch in Uppies World. But uh, turned the studio. The, I, I'll tell you what, it was like the it was like the North Pole in here. You could have a fucking shaker back there. I don't even know if you're there. The planes are going over. Yeah. You could have a full-on missing curfew summer festival. Let's do it. Dirty Honey. Dirty Honey is our leader. Let's start yeah. off with four bands. So we build the stage. Oh, yeah. Build the stage. Like, yeah. You mean like really? I accepted. mean like let's have a shaker back done. You can't hear shit. Look, you've heard it here. You didn't even bring this up to me before we went on air, but this is yeah. a great idea. It just popped into my head. Well, I've been I've been kind of, since our business has started, I've been kind of eh, nudging you. I think like, you just created a new word. Being like the business ship. The, was it a business ship? <laughs> yeah, like a mothership. Yeah, awesome. it's our business friendship. Ethics, friendship, or the, oh, whatever it is, it's a business ship. It's it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a business something. Professional right. partnership. Yeah, yeah it's professional just, partnership. Like, I've been kind of nudging you about starting a missing curfew music festival. Yeah, I believe that you could do it. I believe that you could do it. Start off small. I could help you out as much as ways I could, but I really think you could do it. Like get the the curate the bands bands you, you could you're in could charge cool. of uh, you know the extracurriculars that that yeah, I'll help, that, out, I'll help yeah. out with anything you need to to, to okay. you know but I think we could do a missing curfew summer fest music fest whatever you want to call it and we could build into something where fuck who knows up dog you could be the next Coachella this <laughs> fucking Uppies world it's just Coachella now. I got enough on the plate I don't know if I build out these uh, <laughs> monumental worldwide festivals maybe when the kids get older eh. Yeah, so they can get you know, over, right? I'll ride their coattails yeah. at once. Shout out to Hall Pass, uh, Sammy, Sergio, Rod, uh, A-Hall killed it. But listen, I'll tell you one thing. The blue lights were flowing. Flowing. Big guy, PJ was drinking them. Everyone was drinking them. Uh, so, hey, in the holiday spirit, get the blue lights yeah. in you. By, by the way, what did you think of Beckham's outfit? Loved it. Right? A little sweater. Dude, little the cutest sweater. thing ever was back here. You t- you put it on a hockey thing, and you just said hockey. Oh, he but loves he, it. Yeah, yeah. He loves you, man. Yeah, he's the he man. He not want to get away from you very long. He's like... Uh, yeah, I mean, would you? No, I mean, no, no. no like if you're, no, I mean, I mean, yeah. yeah. There's some days I want to get. I didn't mean away that from you. Yeah. No, but I mean, <laughs> but in, picture in the household. You got mom, sister, dad. Who are you hanging out with? Dad. See, so no disrespect, mom. Love you. No, but that's that's just the way we are. We're a tight knit little yeah. duo right now. It's yeah. good. Yeah. No, it's cool. He looked great. Izzy was adorable. Uh, it was a great party. So thanks to Hall Pass Media and shout out to Todd Pickup, uh, Joe Moody, 
My boys at the Bay Club had an unbelievable bull parade on Friday night. Tom Riley was there. All the all the big Katie guys, Tipton, Lane, Doherty, um, Jamie Hall, all the boys were there. It was great. The boats were humming. Listen, five days of that shit. That's a lot down yeah. there. It's, it's, it's hectic down there in a good way, but five yeah. days they put on the stuff on. Yeah, our listeners, so, he, so it's drone the show. Newport Christmas Boat Parade, and our boy Pickup did a full drone show, right? Full drone, full drone, drone show. And, um, you know, these boats in Newport Beach, there's no lack of, of yachts here. <laughs> and, you know, in, in, in the winter, there's actually a contest that goes around. It's it, it, They give lights or they give awards to the best houses with lights, the best boats with lights. And it's kind of a thing. Like, I got Rookie of the Year one year. The best yeah. girl with the best headlights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You won Rookie of the Year, though. I won Rookie of the Year. I got a, it showed up, you know, Christina put me in because I really went all out Griswold style. I, I, I hung a, a Santa Claus on my chimney. I lifted it up there with my dad. It was pretty gnarly. Dangerous. It's three floors up. And, um, you know, they dropped off this like banner. So I was pretty proud of that. But, but some of these boats, they, there's literally, E, 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 the electricity flowing from the water. Don't fall in. Yeah. yeah, I know. It, it, yeah. You got to have your head on a swivel if you're driving out there. I'm sure. Like, like obviously they're going. I think they're going counterclockwise. I think they're going counterclockwise. I think that. But still, like, should have zigged when you yeah, zoomed zoom out there. You're just like, oh, I want to say, let me grab a drink. Like, yeah. uh, it's chaos. Yeah, yeah. I'd say get a driver for that. Night. Yeah, I'd say just go to the Bay Club, co the cocktail, and watch it from the the safe confines of the land from the land yeah but thanks to those boys uh it's a family feel at big canyon up dog and you can really feel it this time of the year uh around the holiday so thanks fellas all right i'm sure you're you're ready yeah. for this um to our listeners i mean you heard this ass. last week fantasy football playoffs first yeah. round semifinals actually coming up but first round obi mono e mono yeah i i had a decent week I had a couple injuries jacob's my starting yeah. running back 130 points bro yeah i think if jacob's wouldn't have got hurt I mean, I, I, put, I picked up their backup running back who got me 16 points, but the Raiders scored 63 points against the Chargers. You got to think if Jacobs was healthy that maybe he puts up a 30 spot for me. I, I don't know. Pittman got hurt. But listen, I said it here first. I, I was never going to beat you unless McCaffrey forgot how to play football. But um, listen, you, uh, you put out your... your, your, your um, my team? No, but you put out the uh, fantasy, what, what the lines are for you winning. You're like minus four hundred to win now, bro. Your your team is loaded. I think so. I got I, mean, uh, I got O'Reilly this week. Shaddy Sarkis traded you the MVP. I'm Shaddy. I know you're not listening because you're busy playing the NHL. But what in the fuck were you thinking? That trade is you you, you win Jim of the Year, and now you're gonna win the you're gonna win it all unless somebody gets hurt. Yeah. Well, well, thank you because you know I, it, the conversation should be, you know, what magical trade? How did you get? How, how did you seek out? McCaffrey as the yeah. guy and offer I offered at the time listen I offered I first of all I had the first overall pick this year in the draft that never happens flowers I always thought cheated with the draft lotto <laughs> as he's our commissioner and you know fuck you flowers I know you do and so uh I you know, for some reason I get the first overall pick right Jefferson okay guy gets hurt he misses eight games my second pick Josh Allen my fourth pick Joe Burrow so I got two quarterbacks I remember getting chirped right away Shaddy's like hey Next up, pick Aaron Rodgers. Shady chirped you, and then ended up playing right in your hand. Right in my hand. Yeah. See? So, like, Shaddy, I love you, man. You're a glue guy. We'll send you a new glue guy t-shirts. Check them out at Sauce Hockey. But, yeah. Shaddy, like, I know you're busy trying to defend, you know, McDavid and Kucherov and all these guys, Ovi. Yeah, and, he's still doing it, by the way. Doing a hell of a job. But, yep. like, you chirped up you about drafting four quarterbacks, and then you gave him the MVP for one of his backup quarterbacks. I mean, if, if I'm the owner of Shaddy's team, Shaddy might be getting fired. <laughs> He's on the hot seat. He's on the hot seat. He's on the, He's on the hot seat. Hot seat. Um, so I offered him either guy. He picks Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow just kicked Josh yeah. Allen's ass. Oh, it's great. Well, by you. And then I actually then throw a two dimer on jo Joe Burrow to win the you know the Super Bowl. Then he gets hurt next week later. Unfortunately, that's Shaddy's. That's his season. Gonzo. Who knows? Joe Burrow could have been throwing up thirty a night now. But he wouldn't have got more points than McCaffrey was getting. You sure what I'm saying? Yeah, but I gave him Derrick Henry, so I think that was the. That was like his, like, I want, he said, you, I want your, one of your quarterbacks and Derrick Henry. Can you get Derrick Henry three years ago? Because that's a good trade. You got time yeah. machine over there or what? Yeah, yeah, listen. Hey, so there's good trades and bad trades. I've yeah. been part of them. You you, you one up them, but yeah. you got him. So, so, uh, so, and then, you know, Pittman, by the way, I owe he was you going for game. 25. He was going for 25 points until that Steeler took his. I want to ask you this, because Tom Brady came out on, on a post and said, this is all on the quarterback. You don't throw the ball into places where your receivers are going to 
you know, make plays that are going to hurt him. I, I, to me, I'm like, like Tom Brady, are you that good? Well, yes, he is that good. Are you that good that you're never throwing a ball into this, into like a, a, a poor receivers, um, a position the guy's going to get nailed? Like, is that I, all on the quarterback? I, I think it has to do a little. But if you, if you went back and you watched the man of the arena when Tom Brady first came in, like some of yeah. these hits that he took, and yeah. I'm sure yeah. he got his receiver lit up a few times. Lit up. Sure. Now, now I, the Steeler, Pittman looks like he's dead in this picture. Dead. But the Steeler doesn't hit him really <laughs> high. He just hits him when he's when he's in full extension catching the ball. So this is what Tom says. Nobody likes seeing the players get hurt, but hard hits happen. QB should not be throwing the ball in areas where they are expected, their own teammates, for these type of hits, coaches need to coach better. QBs need to recover. So this is parlaying into what he said probably a month ago. He said that there's been a lot of mediocre football being played. Yeah, and I would have to agree with him. I, I don't yeah. think I think the games. I, I I don't know. So this push pushes, to be touch pushes and fucking yeah. To turn, I mean, if Tom Brady thinks that, I'm gonna, beats. I'm gonna agree with him. I'm gonna agree with him. Yeah, that the quarterbacks just need to be better quarterbacks. Fuck, don't set yeah. the guy up in the middle. But remember, remember when Otone, Antonio Brown got hit back in the day? Look that hit up, Max. When Antonio Brown got hit by the guys from Valdez, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Oh, ninety fucking yeah. Antonio Brown has not been the same since that hit. As we all know, he's kind of <laughs> yeah, he's still the way of little loony. Um, Oppie, congratulations, Thanks, buddy. buddy. I'll, I, I'll, I'll drink that. Us. Why, why don't we bring that uh, to dinner tonight? Yeah, we could. Well, we just can, can we cork our own bottles at a. Uh, I'm not sure that's... Well, I, anyway, no, but I'm drinking it with you is, the, is what I'm saying. I'm down for that. Yeah. Let's talk some bets. Um, first of all, I took the Cowboys going into Buffalo for a couple reasons. One, I needed Jaron Allen to have a bad game for my fantasy, uh, which he didn't really have a good game for his no. standards. 68 yards passing. Um, but I also thought the Cowboys would go in there and their offense would create turnovers. Credit to the Bills running the football. That James Cook had over 240 yards, I oh. believe. I mean, he was just a beast. Good coaching by them. But the Cowboys, to me, like just when I think they're going to be, and Max said this a month and a half ago, they look like pussies again. And it wasn't even cold in Buffalo. Oh, it they're... was actually a nice time of year for December. It was, And they just went out and shit the bed and laid down. Um, so they got beat up. They got beat up. They got beat up. And and they're kind of like, you talk about Miami Dolphins, you know, homers, play against good teams, get steamrolled. This is exactly that. Like this is a, it, 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 it's a do or die game for the Bills. But Dallas also has a chance to like make a statement going against the Niners and like who's going to have the perfect Fuck record, yeah. who's improving to be the better team. They got worked. I, I, but I had I just want to touch. I, I obviously picked the Bills because of my my quarterback. But I went on a perfect little afternoon that day. Thank God, I did the Bills Niners Rams. And I had the Rams too. And and mainly because I do have Stafford. I got Ayuk and I have McCaffrey and the Niners D and Bills. So I, I just. It was finally nice to go like a little three bag. Yeah, I had a boy. I had the Rams, uh, so I was one and one. I, another game has jumped out to me, uh, and then listen, I was him and hawing over the Monday nighter, and I just decided I'm not even going to watch because I'm watching hockey. But uh, did you take the birds? Yes, I took the birds. Yeah, and I bought a point minus four, and they should have like just figure out the D. Like, come on, are you worried about figure the out the D? Now? And then and then Kelsey with the tough call in the fourth on. You know, he he gets a false start he, during the tush push. He moves the ball up like half a yard. When he and and I read quotes today, like that's kind of what he's always done. He goes down, he grabs the ball, but he but he puts, puts it, up it like four inches ahead. Boom! There goes the yellow flag penalty. Penalty five yards back. Then they they're forced to kick the field goal. Well, you, you look at. It. I've always said it too. Actually, I watch him, and as soon as before the hut, he moves it, and then he huts it back. It's I'm no football player. I would I would be looking over at the ref. Is this what is this legal? Is this say? It's got a hard on here. He's got about four inches here. That's for after the game. That's Eat for those gummies. <laughs> um, football. I mean, listen. When you talk about the Cowboys, this time of year, I don't care. You, you got to go in there and play your guts out, and they didn't. So for me, that's reason for for, for yeah. concern. Uh, I started watching Hard Knocks because you were watching it uh, in season with Miami Dolphins. First of all, what a setup down there in Miami for these guys. Room looks sick, sick. Yeah. And their head coach, Mike McDaniel's. Guys, a G. I think next year for Halloween, you go as him, and Christina goes as a hot cheerleader. But this guy, good hair. Really like he wears guy. he wears the off white sneakers. He pulls his his track pants up. He's always got a sick watch on. And my favorite thing about him is he always wears shades on the sidelines. Rain, sun. <laughs> he's got his shades on, and I respect that. Yeah, he's, he's wearing. I love this. He's guy. wearing his kits glasses on the yeah, side. I love this guy. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, he's got a good look, good hair. Great little... But you boy. touched on it earlier, too. Like, you can just tell in these meetings that he makes the guys feel like they're, you know, that he's one of them and, and vice versa, right? Oh, and we, we talked about this, too, but, like, there's no reason there should be this huge separation gap in age between a coach and, like, your even youngest player or your oldest player. Like, these coaches, like, once you get a certain age, it's time to talk about the presidents of the USA, like... It, let's bring in guys. Guys still know the game. I like a 45 year old retired guy that was like a good player or a good teammate. They know how to, they know X's and O's. Like, why don't give them the, the, the passage of the ship, you know, yeah. give them the baton to go lead these guys. Cause you know what it's like when you play for someone younger, there's a little bit more respect. There's a little more, more dynamic of how to get through the, the good times and the bad times. I, I think personally. Yeah, and I would say if you're a young coach out, it doesn't matter if it's hockey or football or what. If you're a young coach out there and you're coaching right now, watch these hard knocks and watch how he communicates with his players, how he treats his players, how he makes the game fun, how he brings energy to the group. It helps living in Miami and they're all making fucking millions of dollars. I get that, but that's what I took away from it. Yeah. I'm like, if I was a coach and I saw this, I would go in the next day and treat my players with a little bit more respect and maybe a little bit more fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because then the moments you have to be hard, they actually are like, you know that they can handle it a little, and, bit. and he did get hard because he gave him he gave him Saturday and Sunday off in the second episode. Oh, they, they played Black Friday. He said, "Boys, we're giving you Saturday and Sunday off." And then one guy from the team, which would have been me, was like, "What about Monday, Coach?" <laughs> and he's like, "Fuck you, Monday. We still got we haven't accomplished anything. We still got stuff to do here. You be in here." Monday. He was going Sunday night at uh, fourteen, or fourteen or whatever, yeah. or eleven. Sorry, eleven. Yeah, that's exactly why he's asking. <laughs> And that's even I wouldn't have done that. You get two days off, and they're like, "Ah, oh, throw in the Monday, eh, coach. We'll play on Sunday. <laughs> Going to Bonnaroo, yeah, three day. Um, yeah, so check it out, up. I'm glad you got me into it. I'm enjoying that. Last but not least, here in a little rundown, it was the PNC Championship in Orlando. Shout out to Bernhard Langer. This guy's got to be on life force. The guy's like 68 years old. He won it for the fifth time with his son, who his son is like doing finance in New York, who doesn't even play golf anymore, but took a couple days off and went to the range. They got it done. Tiger was there with Charlie. I just wanted to touch that Charlie didn't wear red on Sunday. That's maybe his saying, hey, Dad, he had a nice Grayson purple little zip up and a purple. He was wearing Grayson. Grayson. I like that. With an Albany hat. Is that him saying, Dad, I'm 14 now. I'm not wearing red. I, I want to I make my own identity here. Or what do you think? You know if they're in the hunt? They shot 61. The first day they didn't play great. Okay. They finished top. Yeah, they were top 10. Yeah, so, so I would say... Yeah, it has to do with something maybe in the past that they're trying to like say, okay, red didn't work the last three years. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going perp. Perk or purple? Perp. I'm going perp. <laughs> purple. You know? Yeah, he looked good. He let the grace. The guy's getting big, man. His up, his his swing speed is like 120. Charlie? Yeah, man. Yeah. And he's hitting it far. This kid's a beast. Can he outbomb me, I think? No, not yet. But he had he's this. This is what I wanted to touch on here real quick. He had a tweet out. So listen, the, the old apple doesn't fall far from the tree here. Let me just pull this up. And shout out to his daughter, Sam Woods. She looked you caddy. Yeah, but that's great. Like you get the you get playing with your son, your daughter's caddy, and I mean dad of the year. Charlie Woods. He said, Stop asking me about the PNC championship leaderboard. Told you all the only tournament I'm worried about right now is the fucking 2028 Masters. <laughs> he said that. He said that. Come on. Right here. Someone grabbed his phone and typed Ch that in Chuck there. Chuck Woods. Right? Chuck Woods, right here. I don't know if it's it's Charlie Woods. It's got a little. It's got to be. A, is that Zyre Golf? What? No, because that looks like it's that's fake. It's got to be fake, right? I, I just, love it. I think it's a great. You know what? It's got to be fake. It's just it's <laughs> the Instagram's called Drunk by the Turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you got me. Oh, that's. I'm incredible. like this guy's a gangster. Yeah, yeah. For 2028 sure. Masters. Bro. That's you know hilarious. That's in four years. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like you're playing John Rahm in four years. I'm sorry, but you're not. So it'd be 18, yeah. Well, it, well when did Tiger win? 18 or 19? I mean, but Tiger's one of one. Charlie has improved. He's got Tiger the same Woods. DNA. Yeah, I know. He's got no, it was a joke. I, I was like, oh, I got to talk to Albie about this kid's a gangster. That's, that's drunk by the turd. You motherfuckers. You got me. You got me. Uh, up dog, last thing here Tiger Woods um, could be done with Nike, bro. I, I never fathomed this. I saw him in the red. Uh, this weekend I saw him in his juicy Nike stuff in the Bahamas. Like, is this true? You think? Is he think he's done? Like, I I don't get why Nike would ever let this guy go. No, it's it's like Michael Jordan ending a, a lifelong career with with exactly. his shoe company. Uh, it's too bad, but I don't think. And Max, you might know, but the, I'm sure Tiger does he have any indoor? Does he have any like back end deals to selling like Nike golf 
style or was it all just upfront money with Tiger Woods? I don't know how that deal was structured. Because MJ's still making- Big time. You, you know, what, what do you call that? It's not an endorsement. Residuals. Oh, I mean, it's coming in, you know, with the cow pile. Yeah, I mean, I know he's got the the league with Rory and like the amount of money he put into that and he's got to have something else. No, but I mean, just him and Nike Golf. I, not the endorsements. I mean, I mean like, you know, it, it does like ownership it, type stuff. Yeah, when he leaves Nike Golf, is there just going to be checks coming in forever and ever? In 2001, he'd be re-upped. That's a while ago, obviously. For 105 years, 100 million. That was in 2001. Yeah, so so if he moves on, what was, this, was the Grayson t-shirt maybe a sign of something to come? I don't know. Charlie? Maybe. There's no way Grace is paying him out of For the 27-year relationship between Tiger Woods and Nike be nearing an end, Tiger did little to dis dismantle rumors. I just don't get why Nike would ever want to leave from him. Like, what? Maybe he goes to sauce hockey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. He starts wearing a uh, back up the Brinks truck sauce hockey. <laughs> who, who knows? But uh, he still, I'll tell you what, point being, he still looks good in that Nike outfit, man. Yeah, I mean, listen. Do you ever do you remember the post? You can't think of him wearing anything else. No. Do you remember the post? Uh, it was years ago. It was it was Patrick Reed in his red 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 shirt and Tiger in his. It's like what I actually look like on Sunday golf and what I think I look like. <laughs> Tiger and Patrick Reed. <laughs> Anyways, it was a great weekend. I thought of you up these 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 guys being able to play and and women and a consortium playing with their sons and daughters and having them caddy. Uh, good on the PGA Tour. It's a great event. It was fun to watch and. Uh, can't wait for you to Is it just all back. golfers and their kids, or is there any other, like, maybe, you no, know, just can golfers. Patrick Mahomes bring his kid there and, and compete, even, you know? Not in this tournament. Okay. Yeah. PNC. PNC. Straight, straight PGA players, yeah. Ritz Carlton Golf Course, Rich. Stay at the Ritz. Smells too. rich. It's nice. Yeah. We'll be right back here at Missing Curfew. Welcome back to Missing Curfew. Up his world. Party, Party time. time. Excellent. Oh, I like when you do that. Yeah, hey, I'm glad you're back from New York, by the way. Tell Thanks. me how it went. I was a little worried. Oh, it was incredible. It was Listen, shoulder. it was an early one. I left early Friday. I got in at 3.30. Um, I went and walked around, bought a bought a nice sweater from James Purse just to have. Hey, oh, look at you. you. Know, I wasn't really ready to rock and roll for, for you know Christmas time there. But just shout out to my girl. It was her birthday weekend. Christina, I love you to death. Uh, you got amazing friends there in New York. I understand why you miss us so much. Yeah. Um, we had a little private dinner at Catch Catch Steak. Great dinner. Bunch of people were there, hors d'oeuvres. Shout out to O'Malley and his girl, Gabby. Great girl. Um, you know, a lot, just just a great group there. And then we went to this, like, I don't know, like I could say it was a gay bar. It was it was, <laughs> it was full, full on, like, nice lighting, great 80s tunes. DJ just absolutely shredded it. Um, it was called Joy Face. I Fucking think you're gonna say Joy I Face. I didn't know what was coming. You're like, ah, I could say it. it's gay bar. Yeah, yeah, no, this, but it was incredible. We we went in there, perfect room. It was probably like 60, 70 people in there. We had a whole table to ourselves. Um, the night didn't end up perfect. We a little out of our uh, out of our rockers, and then we. Uh, uh, that's what you're supposed to do. And then you know Saturday, good brunch day. Uh, Cipriani's. I mean, we just we took in the New York life, you know, like it was, and then ended up at Due West with a couple of the boys. Shout out. Sunday football due west. Yeah. Did nice. Jay Jay Liddell shout out to Jay. He stopped over. My our boy Andrew from Good Life. Um and Char you know Charlie. Charlie's a good man. He's great guy. He's our man. Thanks for the mirrors. We're gonna get those hooked up. Hey, Charlie. Appreciate that. Um, but anyways, a great weekend. Three dare. And then I'll tell you what, my flight home was a six thirty p six thirty AM departure from Newark. I woke up at Joffrey Lupel's at five thirty five. So I have less than an hour to get to the plane. I order my Uber. I'm in the thing in five minutes. By yourself? Yes. Oh. 540, I leave. I get to there at I get there at 610. I have 10 minutes to get through the gate, through security, and run down all the way to the end of Newark Airport. Made my flight. I had a first class right to Orange County. So thank God, because my day would have been ruined. Oh, that would have been awful. But I made it. And here I am. Up is world. Party time. <laughs> New York City. Woo! Woo! Sounds expensive, bro. All those places, oh, you, hey, all the places you just named by the way there, it's all fucking pricey stuff, Max. Pricey. Eh? I, I took care. Oh, I took oh, care oh, of uh, Joy. I, I took care of my girl's yeah, birthday, yeah. you know. But but the flights use some points. Use some points. Out of boy, get the points. points. Shout out, oh Lupul, thank you. We stayed at Lupul's place. Ah, he's not listening to the pod. You don't no, he's can't. Right? He's at home doing God knows what. And so, <laughs> hey, we'll see Lupus tonight. Hey, we'll see Lupus tonight. But uh, I'll be. I'm glad you had a great time. Happy birthday to your beautiful girl. Listen, my former teammate, Bobby Lou, this is one thing I can guarantee I'm never going to get. The Canucks Ring of Honor, well-deserved Bobby Lou. 
Um, first in the Canucks in career wins with 252. Shutouts 38. Second in goals against 2.36. And second in save percentage at 919. Um, wins a gold medal there too for Canada, right? In his home. Too. Like that's just that's yeah. icing on the cake. I'll tell you what, playing in front of Lou was just, just a treat and notoriously a slow starter. But come November, man, oh, my two years yeah. there, you just knew. Yeah. And my second year there, I knew it was coming. And and the way, the consistency, man. And I watch these goalies now, and I feel sorry for them because these guys go to the front of the net, they camp in front, they do whatever they want, no one touches them. Lou, Lou always used to yell at you. It was used to scare me. Move, move, move. I'm like, holy fuck, Lou, I'm trying to move him here. Uh, but the consistency that he played with, man, um, I probably took for granted when I was in Vancouver, but he was so good. Well deserved. I love him. He's looking good. And the one thing I wanted to touch on, Uppy, and we, we touched on this, you know, a month and a half ago at Mr. Curfew, the buzz is back in the city. And for Lou to say, A, the fans deserve it, which they do, because the fans up there are great, and B, that's the way it's supposed to be. He's so right. When that city is and when you're winning and you your your team is good, there's nothing better. You no. Know? The city right. goes, uh, you're an icon, you're a legend. If you're a single guy, it's extremely easy to get laid. It's 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 great. It's a great city. Um I'm happy for them, and I'm with him. He said at the end of his speech, he said, free the skate jersey, which is the black and gold one. It's time to bring those babies back full on. They're my favorite jerseys. Clint so Hughes looks insane in it, by the way. Yeah. It's I mean, a great jersey. Yeah. Pavel, Linden, Klain. Yeah, Lou, Lou, congrats, buddy. That's a huge, uh, huge honor. Well done. He looked good. His hair was nice and slicked back. Slicked back. He's going to be a GM someday, right? Yeah, well, he's assistant GM now for it, but yeah. He's going to be a GM. He will, maybe... Yeah. You know, when Rutherford's done there, he steps right in. He was a beast, man. He was a beast. So good on him. I'd like to know what he did after. I wonder if he went out after a few or if he took it easy. Or I, I, I got one funny story at Lou. Yeah. When, sure. At the end of the year in Florida, uh, we got a last-minute text message from a guy on our team, I won't say who, that um, that all the wives are coming out to the year-end party in Miami. And then Lou stepped onto the, onto the microphone there on the group text and said, what? Oh, excuse me. Pardon? Uh, this is supposed to be our year-end little bash. Yeah, uh, no why. I and I agree. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So that, you know, it kind of rubbed him the wrong way. But you know what else rubbed him the wrong way was when we were in Montreal. And listen, Bobby Lou didn't go out at all during the season. Never at home. Never on the road. He led the league in room service, which yeah, I respected. He knew his game. He knew yep. his body. Montreal, the up dog. And my, <laughs> he had to, we get curfew and Uppy's on the team text. Thanks a lot, Uppy. I was finally going to go out tonight, but now I can't. <laughs> I'm like, Lou, you can go out if you want. I'm sure Gerard Gallant will let you go out. But. Yeah, no, his, his text was, oh, whoever went out last night, thanks. Yeah, I, you know, this was the only night. And then I'm like, I, I basically go, sorry, Lou, but but there's more backstory to this than, <laughs> than what you believe. Like, I wasn't out that late. Jeez. Yeah, man, we won the game. Let's not forget Ooh. we won the game. That's how you win. Win or lose, hit the booze. Uh, Louis, congratulations, Vancouver. Good on you guys. Uh, DraftKings. You want to call them bets? You want to call them bad beats? I'm going to call this one a DraftKings bad beat. Listen, the Detroit Red Wings, they went out and got Patty Kane. He looks phenomenal in the uniform. He had a one of the sickest back to his passes oh. to break it last night. But you got the you got the um, you got the Anaheim Ducks coming in. But first of all, the Red Wings are minus two thirty. So right then it's it's a big line. But I figured Ducks coming in back to back game playing the Devils. At the end of a nine-day road trip, it's almost Christmas. You got to think these Ducks got one foot already back in Southern California, right? You would think. Yeah. What do the Red Wings do? Fucking come out and get down 4 nothing. They fought back to make it 4-3. The Ducks had 10 penalties in the third period. My point being up is when I watch this as an ex-player, those are the games you have to win to get in the playoffs. And for the Detroit Red Wings, shame on you. To let that one slip away and come out that flat in front of great fans. We were we were at Little Caesars Arena for opening night. That building's awesome. The the, the fans are great. But Uppy, that's a red flag for me, Detroit Red Wings. It cost me some Sazich, but that's a game you have to win if you're a playoff team. You have to win that hockey game. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, it was Dylan Larkin's first game back after a, a, a scary situation. But anytime you get down, I don't care if you're playing the New York Rangers, you get down four nothing, you're just not ready to play the game. You're not ready. And you can't at this time of year. You know, being in the position they're in, fighting for a spot at home, you just can't. This is when, like, this is when you know, like, people are showing up at the building, spending that Christmas money to, to watch you guys play. You got to step up and have a little. It should have been four nothing Red Wings. Yeah, nine first. game, like a nine day roadie. Yes, is where you step on it. Step on them. exactly. And the night before they played the Devils, cost me money. I took the Devils. The Ducks have been cost me some cheddar, but 
Gibson stood on his head. They hung in the game. They found a way to win. If I'm in that Red Wings dressing room, me and you, Ops, I'm like, Uppy, let's go. But boys, let's jump on these guys right away. Like, don't even hesitate. Let's get the first two and make it 4 nothing, and, and then the Ducks would have just, I mean, they yeah. probably they got some character, but right? They would have already been on the plane. Like, to me, if I'm the coaching staff, I'm not going to tell Stevie Y what to do, but like, if I'm in that dressing room, I guess, as an ex player, the next day I'm like, boys, that's not fucking good enough. Like, let's go. Yeah. Right? Like, who's the lead? Like, I love Larks, but who else is in that dressing room? Like, I guess up you what I'm saying is, are they still a little young? Are they still a young team? Can they use that excuse? Yeah, but I mean, you look at their back end, they they, they still have some guys that you got to lean on. They do. Um, you know, but then you look at the Vegas line, what was it, minus 230? Minus 230. Yeah, it, it, these lines, like, yeah, that that's that's tricky to take, right? But you got to, the Vegas, you know, they, they know they know something. They, I bet, and listen, I, I'm not saying I'm killing in hockey because I'm not, I'm on the cold streak now. I bet hockey as if I'm a player, as an ex-player. Yeah. I put myself in both teams' dressing rooms. I put myself in that Detroit Red Wings dressing room that we're supposed to make the playoffs. We got the, one of the last place teams in the Western Conference at the end of a nine-day road trip a week before Christmas, and we give up four quick ones, three in the first and one at the start of the second. That pisses me off more. You give up three in the first, yeah. and you come out at the start of the second, give up another one. Yeah, Like, I, I just, I don't know. Yeah. It costs no, money, like, so I'm pissed. You do know. But, boys... And that, it, it, be proud to wear that crest, man. They got great fans there. So, anyways, back at it tonight. Back at it tonight. <laughs> uh, miss a curfew. Ooh, ooh. Dog of the week duck, here. Duck, dog of the week. One of your former teammates, uh, Jacob Marstrom, played last night against the Calgary Flames. Hadn't played in seventh. Florida fucking threw the kitchen sink at him for the first two periods. Marky was unbelievable. Uh, so, for that, Marky, ooh, ooh, dog of the week, ups. Yeah, good for him to be back. He's... Uh, He's the man. He's the man. Look good in there, man. I know. He looked big. Listen, Calgary's Calgary's playing good. The one kid that Fred Russian, Russian kid's on a five five game goal streak. Kaji's playing good. Kaji's playing good. We got to get Hubie on that on the board again. Oh, poor Hubie, man. He's 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 trying. He's trying so hard, and they got him playing with Backlund, who probably plays at the same pace as him. He's got to shoot the puck more up. See, I, easy for me to say with 13 career goals from my couch in fucking Orange County, but I, I think if he can shoot the puck more, yeah, you tell me it might open up more space for him. Won't it? He's if he shoots the puck, he's got a he's got a deceptive shot because yeah. you're always he's always open to the middle of the ice to pass. Now I don't think it's a shot so much as it's like just the game being really fast. And when when you're struggling and you're playing like you know a step behind, which kind of looks like he is. And you're playing in Calgary, a place he probably doesn't want to be. Yeah. It's just, it's tricky, man. Let's just, you, you're saying you look at these betting from a player standpoint. I look at being in a really tough spot for a player. Like, I know he's going to be I right. I've Calgary much uh, like I, I know. Died. That's how I look at it. I don't look at it like he should shoot more. I look at it as like he needs to be in Los Olas, you know, or or no, life, yeah. life was better back then. Like, the pressure was lower. The you know the cars were nicer. His life his life's got to be okay when it, on those every two weeks. So when that paycheck comes, he's making what ten and a half. I mean, yeah, it was a three hundred grand a week. That's sure fifty grand. No, I I, I know it actually it right? makes me want to puke that it's more than that. I I know it makes me want to puke though that he's opening up those checks, but it's better to open up a check knowing you got two and two the night before. Fuck, you know no, I'm not saying that. I, I know. Just it, saying, it, I'm just saying not. when you see that four hundred grand. It, it, it makes that minus two sting a little bit less is all I'm saying. Yeah, and it's better. There's two clubs in the NHL, okay, to be in. Yeah. There's the overpaid one and the underpaid. Let's be honest. It's a lot nicer waking up in the morning being in the overpaid club. I, I agree, and I would say this about the Flames fans. I think they've handled it with pure class, and I think that's because they know how much it's it hurting Hubie. I know. Like, he's, he's trying. He's trying, man. He's trying. And that's all you can ask. So, uh, Markstrom, maybe we'll give him a little bump here. You gave him a curfew bump there. I know, but maybe here's another one. Is the team's going, so that's it's Christmas time too. Cause maybe well. maybe Santa's going to bring a couple goals. Yeah, he should just get drunk over the holidays too. That always seems <laughs> always seems like we play better. But speaking of getting drunk, up dog, get this guy a beer. We're going to hand him out here. Listen, Maddie Nice, watch him play on Saturday night. Gordy Al hat trick. First guy. Shame on the Leafs here oh for this. God, windbag. First guy since the windbag, Daniel Winnick. <laughs> oh, windbag! You'll hear him before you see him. Uh, just joking, Winnie, love you. But Matty Nyes, Cordy Al hat trick, scored a great goal, came out, stuck up for his teammate, and then they had the apple to finish off. Listen, I like this kid. I like this kid, American born player, good size, takes good it size, to the yeah. net, starting to realize that he's bigger than some guys out there and playing a little bit harder. 
And then I also wanted to give some love to Max Domi. A goal, two assists, played unbelievable. Uh, his, his dad, Ty, was in the building. That's the Max Domi that I was talking about that should be playing with Marner and Matthews. Electric, jumping in, making plays, stopping on a dime, dishing the guys. Uh, so Max Domi, get yourself a beer. Uh, it was good to see his old man there. We're always pulling for Max up, dog. Awesome, man. Congrats. Um, oh, and who was having more fun than Ty Domi last week in Vegas at the new Fountain Blue Hotel? Yeah. There was a lot of people sitting around that crafts table. I was big league count. One, one being Mr. Uh, Ty Domi himself, so shout out. Man, those drinks must have tasted good around that table. We got to get out there and check that Fountain Blue. Yeah, uh-huh. it looks amazing. It looks sick. Uh, so, hey, two guys. Huge shout out to these two guys. I love them both. Jack Hughes, 100 career NHL goals. He's having a year so far. Um, I actually got to watch an Instagram video. Someone just put up all his 100 goals. Man, he, he's been sick since he started. Like, I mean, we gave him, I questioned the deal when he got it because he was hurt, hadn't played many games, but this kid is just swag, swag, swag. I got a little stick that I gave to Beckham, a Jack Hughes stick, so he's fired up. Um, and then Jack Eichel, 10-game point streak, buzzing right now, set a Vegas record for point streaks. Um Playing well, like you said, a guy that's going to be in uh, in the talks for the Selkie this year. Look, yeah, he's a playing one. unbelievable at both ends of the rink, and Vegas has just been buzzing. So shout out to the two Jacks. Love everything about Vegas, but they continue to wear these gold helmets. I, I don't like uh, it. wasn't perfect. Yeah, yeah. one. Thank God they won in them. Yeah, uh, they beat the Flames in them. I had the I had the Vegas, but yeah, Jack. I mean, to me, Ike's is right down no brainer. The Selkie winner, and last but not least, our boy Alex Kalorn starting to heat up for the. For the Ducks, five points in five games. Get this guy a beer. Listen, he missed time. When you miss time in the NHL, and you're a veteran guy especially, coming to a new team, it takes time to get your fucking shit going. Listen, I've watched the Ducks play a lot in the last week and a half. Killer looks like the guy that played in Tampa, so good for him. He's getting lots of opportunity, power play, playing on the top line right now. Listen, they got Zegris, McTavish, Drysdale. Fuck, who else they got out? They got a bunch of guys out. Out, yeah. I mean, their yeah, top line center right now is Adam Henrik. Wow. Maybe we should lace them up. Did you watch any video from uh, from Aspen? Me and you were buzzing. They got your goal on Instagram. I know, Last Max. Goal. Well done, by Max, the way, you Max. Hey, hey, it was a stinker. He made it 8-2. You made him look like he got the game winner. Hey, you and Flowers from the bench, eh? Hey, buck you up, Shaw. <laughs> Last goal wins. And then I went in and just buried one. Max, well done. Good videography. Just looking out for you, Updog. Thanks, buddy. Killer, keep it going, buddy. Get these guys a beer. A holiday season. Get a blue light in you, fellas. We like to give them out, but we like to just put you on the milk cart, too. We're going to yeah. put guys on the milk cart right now. And listen, this, is, uh, th- this isn't going to be a, a negative thing either because I'm going to touch on this right now. Oh, Alex Ovechkin, 1,500 points. Congrats last week. But going 12 games without a goal and only five goals in 28 games this year. We want this guy to stay hot. Yeah, you got to get him back. We got we we need seventy more. Like we gotta let's start pumping that puck in the net again. Start feeding him on that top that right side and let's let him score some big goals again and get him back. So Yeah, and listen, I I, I, I wanted to put him on the milk card because I want to get him going, which sometimes the old cart and curfew bump does. Listen, one of two things. The caps need him. They're yeah. in a playoff hunt right now. They're I'm... hanging tough and he's only got five goals. And I was just sitting there watching games the other day or last week thinking, what what the league's missing something. So I looked up Ovechkin's goals, and it was I'm like I, I miss seeing this guy score. Yeah. I miss seeing his celebrations. I miss seeing him kiss and pump the sky. Like I, I know we all, we all get old ups. I'm not ready for Ovi to be done just yet. I, I miss him scoring goals. So Ovi, we're putting you on the milk cart with love, buddy, to hopefully get you going. Yeah. But his teammates need him up. They're yeah, in the playoff hunt. I know. Yeah, they're, you're right. They're proving me wrong. They've been playing hard. They're getting good goaltending. Your boy from uh, Camper. Camper. I don't even know if he's the starter. I think. Ah, but whatever. They got a nice duo there, but yeah. Playing well. No, I haven't. I haven't watched a lot of Caps games. Uh, but Ovi, get going for the boys here. And last but not least, uh, I love Billy Garen. I think he's one of the best GMs in the in the league. And I'm sure this wasn't his decision. You know John Hines better than me. But listen, Mark Andre Fleury's maybe last opportunity to go into Pittsburgh. I don't give a. I don't care if you got a plan or you you, you start the kid. You start Fleury, not the kid. You start Flower. He's yeah, God, this is disrespectful. To me, as an ex-player, when I heard it, it put a sour taste in my mouth. There was fans of the game with, with Marc-Andre Fleury signs. They wanted to see him. You lost the hockey game anyways, up dog. This is the stuff, come on, coaches, be better than this. This guy deserves to start if that's his last time going into pit for the rest of his life. 
This is this is Marty Broder going back to New Jersey in the last year of his career not playing. This is you know, Patrick Waugh with the Avalanche going back to Montreal not playing. There's so much wrong with this, but I like John Hines. I just think plan or not, this is uh, it was a mistake and you're on the milk card. Yeah. <laughs> well, fucking well said. I'm, I'm ending it with that. Well said, up dog. That's the milk card, Bella. Listen, let's go around the National League a little bit here, up dog. Uh, your former team, the St. Louis Blues, have been in the headlines. You know, Chief went, they fired Chief. Uh, we all wish him the best. He'll bounce back. Jordan Cairo situation. Listen, when he was crying on his interview after the game, I didn't really know what to think. I, I didn't love it. I'll be honest. I didn't love it. I, you know, you're making a lot of money. There, there's two times you should cry in your career. When you lose in the playoffs and when you clear waivers. Those two times you could cry your eyes. Or when you win. Or when you win like Tamo did. Then you cry. And then I seen after the game on the weekend, he played unbelievable. The fans were going crazy. He said, I fucking love playing this town. So I, I don't know what to think of this situation, Up Dog. What's your thoughts on a guy who played in that city? Well, I I don't know Jordan Cairo. He was a draft pick when we were there. He played in the minors. Um, you know, I got a ton of buddies that, that have played with him. He's making a lot of money now. Yeah. He's now looked upon as supposed to be a guy that that steps up and makes big plays and produces and uh is a professional. And what I felt like was when the news came out about Chief, uh, and then Jeremy Rutherford interviews this, you know, this Jordan Cairo after pregame skate before a game, and he happens to be asked, you know, it was public knowledge that your relationship wasn't great with Chief. Would you like to elaborate on that? Um, and then this kid's comments of, I have no comment. He's not my coach anymore. Yeah. Whether or not that's a mistake on his part of just saying that your the, the, the honest and most easiest answer is to say, yeah, we, we d didn't see eye to eye. You know what? Totally. There, there were things in my game. He didn't like, and there were that's things, a professional way there were things it. down the road that, um, that obviously we butt heads. We didn't see eye to eye. And, and now I have a fresh start different that, but, the comments is where everyone had a problem because in context, your words matter. And this went out to the masses and it took only two or three hours for people to actually see this headline. And it's nothing against Jeremy Rutherford. He's doing his job. He's a great reporter. I love the guy. This is, this is now just on you. So I, I don't feel bad at all because you, you know, you said it and treat it as a learning experience. We've all had them. This is just something like you have eight years there. You have eight years. People don't easily, you know, take criticism. The Chief played the game, played hard. You knew what you're going to get. Chief got this kid ultimately a position on this team to play power play, to score goals, to come out from the minors. So did Doug Armstrong. And these comments were a shot at both of those guys. And now, you know, you go from you go from after pregame skate thinking you're the shit yeah. to having a bad night because everyone boos you crying yeah to you know the next day you have a chance to get back and prove yourself again and he did and i'm glad he took advantage of that and then the fans coming on i love the interview after yeah. i thought it was great pretty you cool. spoke from your heart now hopefully they forget you but but just a little a lesson for all these kids out there younger guys older guys you know treat these treat the coaches treat the gms treat them all with respect because words matter and you know at the end of the day you know, Chief wasn't going to, Chief gets fired. He's not, you know, burying you. He's done. No. That's not his thing. Why, why would he bury you? It's a, it's not, and I'm not saying you buried him, but just the comments, bro. No, you're right. It. You're right. And anyway. The way you answer is the way he should answer it. And I will leave it at this. I don't know Jordan Cairo. If you think you're playing hard enough, play a little harder. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you'll have any problems with the fans of St. Louis. So interesting situation up, dog. You went from crying to swearing to love the crowd. Good on the Blues fans for giving them a little, it's just, it's a great sports city. I would just say play a little bit harder, kid. You'll be okay. Kid that plays hard. Listen, Ryan Lindgren, I love this guy. 55, Swedish kid, plays for the Rangers. He's usually dishing it out. Fella, keep your fucking head up here, man. <laughs> like, you, you, three games in a row, he got hit by McCabe, McGinn, and Pastor not got him twice. Pastor might get suspended. I don't know if it came out yet or not. But listen, boys, and everyone in the league, guys that listen to Mr. Curfew or guys that don't, whatever, 
Keep your head up, fellas. You can't get railroaded three times in one week up, dog. <laughs> I know. I mean, come on, bud. I know, unless you're asking for it. Unless, unless you're, you're just like, someone, it's been a rough week. Someone just nailed me. Or unless he was at Christmas parties all week in Manhattan. Yeah. So like, oh, well, geez, he might have cool. been there. Was he at that club with me? Maybe. You might have saw him. <laughs> yeah. saw him. But listen, Lindgren, I, I, listen, buddy, I love your game. I love your number. For everyone in the league, fellas, keep your head up here and continue playing physical guys out there. I love it, but you got to get your head up. I just wanted to touch on it with you up, dog. Uh, the missing curfew hot seat. I put DJ Smith on there last week. Uh, I'm not happy this worked out the way it did. I just told you up after watching Ottawa play the last couple times. I watched him play in Vegas two nights ago. I, I figured he was fired after that. DJ Smith, I wish you the best, buddy. I think you will bounce back. Fucking turn back the clocks here. No. Jacques Martin. I didn't even know that guy was still around. 71 years old. been their assistant coach, but I had no idea. I love the move bringing Daniel Alfredson in on the coaching. No. To me, this is what... Talkit did in uh, in Vancouver with Adam Foote and with um, you hit me with the D coach. Hit Sergey me with your best shot. Sergey Gonchar. Sergey Gonchar. So again, and this is just what we're talking about with McDaniel's. It's like these guys, there shouldn't be the big separation gap. Um, Daniel Alvarez is not too long away removed from the game. He's a well respected guy amongst, I'm sure, the guys in their locker room, the city, the fans. So I think it's a great move there. This is obviously in term. It's, I, I hope I'm not watching Zach Martin coach for five years. Are we? Well, you still no, want it. Yeah. So. so there's no chance. Like it's time to you know, let's let's bring a, let's breed another young guy to come in and coach. But you've been always a DJ Smith fan. Yeah. Um, but time was up. He was on the hot seat last week. It was your seat was burning. You had the you had the monkey butt going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you know we wish him the best and and the guys had much respect for him. Right. So that's. At the end of the day, when you leave this game or you leave a team like that, because coaches get hired to get fired, you just want to know that you pl- you you know you gave it everything you got. And your teammates respected you. Yeah, you teed me up. For first of all, I'm with you on Daniel Alverson. Daniel Alverson, everything you said, I agree with. I think Jacques Martin will help with their structure, and I think there's going to be a point where they wish these guys had D- wish they had DJ yeah. Smith back. And boys, Brady Batherson, these beauty kids I've gotten to know, use this boys. Listen, you're 12 points out right now. You got games in hand. You played the least amount of games. Fellas, nobody's giving you a chance. Prove them wrong. Stick it up their fucking ass. Come out here and play hard. Enjoy your holiday season, but it's time to get going now up, dog. But I'm with you on Alfredson. I think that's a great move. So yeah. uh, sticking with around the National League here, uh, our boy down in South Florida, Matty Kachuk. I just want to read a little quote that he had. There's so much belief in what we're building here. No one person is more important than the next. I'm not going to give up what we're trying to build here to cheat for a little more more offense. That's not the way it works here. We've built an unbelievable culture. I, when I read this, man, I was like, yeah, I yeah. texted him right away. I said, mm-hmm. fella, that's that's what it's all about. Shout out to Paul Maurice, Sylvain Lefebvre, D coach, one of my favorite coaches of all time. They are building something, and they're in great shape. I watched them play Calgary last night. Tough loss. Outplayed them, should have won. But Uppy, you know this more than anyone because you've rehabbed. Chucky was hurt all summer. Give this guy, Cats fans, it's okay where he's at right now. He's already had his 100-point season last year and the year before. Let him get healthy. Let him get going. I think they're sitting in a great place. But if my best player is saying that, Uppy, if I'm Paul Maurice, I love where my club's going. Two two things here is, uh, first off, what I said about Jordan Cairo, this is what you need to like understand. Like the, These are quotes that come from the heart, and when someone's given you so when someone's giving you shit, like whether it's the media or the fans or whatever, like understand the game a little bit more, right? Like this, Manny Kachuk understands that they have a great team, that they're going to have ups and downs. He's personally not going to be, you know, uh, offensive, you know, an offensive threat every night after 100 points last year, right? But he knows that the grind day to day, showing up, playing hard, grinding through his own personal stuff to yeah. be the, you know, to to suck it up. It's like. It's like showing up on the bus when you, you know, the team wins seven nothing. You didn't get any points, and everyone's happy, and you're grumpy. I hate those guys. It's it's they're they were the though. worst. I know they're the worst, but that's that's kind of the game that we're that we're involved in. And the more guys you have, like Matty Kachuk, uh, the better your group is. Now, Paul Maurice is the second part of this. Is what I want to talk about. Paul Maurice, the way he speaks, is exactly this the this reflection of what you're getting from Matty Kachuk. Right, hundred percent. He's he's Day to day, relying on these guys to understand that it's it is culture and it is eighty two games a year, and that we're building to that ultimate goal of winning the Stanley Cup. 
and you can't get there with just personal, you know, like personal success. So, you know, I, I, I look at that Obi when I read that yesterday, I, I immediately thought, wow, this, this group understands. And it's, uh, and the, those are the teams you uh, you want to play for. And those are the teams you want to, you know, see go, go deep. hundred percent. Well said by man. And if, Hey, listen, Jeff King's future bet, maybe tickle the Panthers right now to win the Eastern conference and maybe get back to Stanley cup finals. I don't know what their odds at right now, but I like where they're sitting last but not least here around the national league up dog. Leo Carlson for, first of all, let me say this. I don't know if I said it. I, I was wrong about this kid. I only watched him play World Juniors, but this kid is the real deal. Love is 91. Love his style. Um, the other night against New Jersey, they gave him a healthy scratch for load managing, which is a word that I don't think should be anywhere brought near the NHL. We all know what happened in the NBA with it. So I want to see, this is what, this is Pat Verbeek's quote. I want him to be a horse in the second half of the season, so we're going to manage his game for the next couple of months. Now, if you're going to manage his body because he's banged up, if he, if he's got a bad groin or his back's in one or his hips and the longevity of his career, okay. But if you're just giving this kid a fucking night off because you don't want him to you know, eat a minus two or minus three, I don't agree with that. If this kid's the second overall pick, put him in the fight. If he's healthy, put him in the fight every single night. That's how you build character up, dog. He was only out one night. He was back in last night against Detroit. But for me, unless it's for longevity of his body... That's that's another thing because this is a franchise player, but just to give him a night off for load management, mentally to me, which I think this is what it is. I could be wrong. I don't like it ups. Yeah, I would say that there's probably things in Leo's game that are starting to show, and that that's why this is being addressed the way it is. I, I would say if Leo's if Leo's a guy that every night is is getting better, or if his struggles are just like maybe fighting the puck a little bit here and there, like fine. But there's got to be something that they're seeing, Obi, because I look back when I was, you know, when I'm a first rounder or, you know, you look at other guys kind of coming up. I wish teams would just be like, ah, fuck, just go play. Just go play. Just go play. You kind of create all these bad habits. And part of me thinks that these bad habits are creeping into his game. And he's yet to be a pro and play 82 game plus seasons, right? Like, so the, the load management comment, though, why not just say, He's got the night off. His game hasn't been as good as it should be. And you know what? We're last couple of games of the of the road trip. We need. We're, you know, we want to win. Yeah. I it just load management. Shut up. Yeah. No, I don't need to <laughs> shut up. But what, you, no, no. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, yeah. It, you know, it, it, if the kid needs a couple of days to to look at his game from up top, you know what that does? It kind of pisses you off. Gets a little piss and vinegar in your game, and then you usually come out of it on, on on the head. That's the worst thing too, by the way, is when you get scratched. And yeah. in the next game, you play great because the coach just knows that you can be scratched all the time. Yeah. It's, I, I mean, come on. And I get what you're saying from, and then there was times during my career where I was like, sit this fucking guy down. But this, this guy, you, this you, guy wish, there, you wish there was more accountability. This guy is second overall. This guy is this future of the franchise. I know. So, so show me his last 10 games. Well, he's got eight goals, seven assists, 15 points in 22 games. He's minus five. So I bet you his last five games, though, he's probably minus one, minus two. And unfortunately, like, that's creeping into his game. Or maybe you got caught going out in New York and they just said, have a seat, kid. Against the Rangers? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're onto something here. Against Winnipeg at home, he was minus two. Yeah. In uh, La Island, he was minus one. And the Rangers, he was even Steven. He's playing about 17, 18 minutes a night. I'm just, I know you're, you're, how you're saying it. I'm talking it from a building, building a yeah, building character. Yeah, this Swedish kid's come over. He seems like a great kid. The boys love him. We should ask Killer about him. But don't, like, he get out in the fight. Get out there. You want to finish off this nine game road trip? We're playing Jersey, then we're going into the Motor City, and you got to be a big fucking reason why, kid. Don't don't give him that. Go sit up top and fucking I get a workout in. I don't know when when it's this good of a kid and he's yeah. learning how to play the North American game. Yeah, but hey, I'm not a GM. I got a podcast <laughs> with my best buddy. So, anyways, up dog, love it, buddy. The rundown's uh, favorite part of my week. Max Miller, way to play a hurt fella. Out of boy, get the liquid IV in you. Uh, up dog, that was missing curfew, fellas.